Here are the 40 runners. Number one is Hedge Hunter, the 2005 winner, running in his fifth Grand National, an Aintree Warrior, and Ruby Walsh in the saddle. Number two is High Cloy, better known over two and a half miles. He'll probably struggle over this trip, but he's a ride for Tom Doyle at 100 to 1. Number three is Nowhere, a good solid stayer, carrying the colours of a previous winner, Bindery. Joe Tizard takes the ride at 50 to 1. Number four, Mr. Pointman. Well, he's won over the big fences here at Aintree. He won the Beecher Chase in November. Sam Thomas takes the ride. Number five is Turco. He's one of the youngest horses in the race. He's a six-year-old. He's run some really good races this year. Richard Johnson in the saddle. Number six is Madison de Burley as a ride for Tom Scudamore. His grandfather, Michael, won the race on Oxo back in 1959. Number seven in the colours of Mercy Rymel is Simon. He fell at the 25th fence last year with Andrew Thornton, who's injured. Dominic Ellsworth is his pilot this afternoon. Number eight is Ardahe. The reserve gets in, confirmed only within the last 24 hours that he and David England will take their chance. Number nine is Iron Man, written by Christian Williams, who is runner-up on Royal Eau Claire. Horse cost connection £70,000 just two years ago. Number 10, fundamentalist and the trainer Nigel Twiston Davis has won it with Earth Summit and Bindari. It's his major hope today with Paddy Brennan in the saddle. Number 11 is Butler's Cabin. Can he give Tony McCoy a win at his 13th attempt? He's a three star chance, according to our experts. Number 12 is Slim Pickings. Third last year, he's been trained especially for this race. Barry Garrity, a previous winner in the saddle, also three stars. Number 13, Chelsea Harbour. Davy Russell, Ireland's leading jockey at the moment. This is a real stayer, and he could be staying on at the finish of this. 14 is Vodka Blur. He's sometimes an unpredictable customer, but he's won two recent races, and Paul Maloney takes the ride. Two stars. And 15, Lamy, 10th in last year's Grand National. McCoy's deserted him, but the oldest jockey in the field, Mick Fitzgerald, in the saddle. 16 is Snowy Morning, runs in the colours of the Quayside Syndicate. Three brothers, a sister and a nephew are the five people who own this 16 to 1 chance. 17, Beulis Berry, he was a faller at Beecher's Brook second time last year. Dennis O'Regan had a winner this afternoon already, is his rider. Number 18 is Contraband, he'll be a first runner in the race for trainer 33-year-old Paul Murphy and Keith Mercer's on board. Number 19 is last year's runner-up, McKelvey. Tom O'Brien rides the horse, who's trained by Peter Bowen. Number 20 is Joachi. He's one of three in the field, owned by David Johnson. You'll be looking for a red cap for him. Let's go on to 21, which is Point Barrow, the Irish Grand National winner, who fell at the first last year. Tony Dobbin has his last national ride, 25 to 1. 22 is Darjon. He's a grey. We haven't had a grey for years. Chock Thornton in the saddle. Alan King, the rider, or the trainer, I should say, and a three-star chance, according to our experts. 23 is No Fool, a horse who's been changing stables like some people change their socks. It's ridden by Shea Barry. 24 is Bailey Breeze. Well, he's ridden by Paddy Flood, having his first Grand National ride, a 21-year-old who recently won the Irish Grand National. 25 is Bob Hall, gets only one star at this 100 to 1 chance. Noel Feely is the rider. If you're a supporter of the favourite, this is the number you'll want. 26, Cloudy Lane, trained by Donald McCain and ridden by Jason McGuire. He heads the betting at the moment at 6 to 1. Number 27, King John's Castle, another of the Greys. Trainer Arthur Moore's had 13 Grand National runners. He's yet to get a finisher. Paul Carberry rides. Number 28 is Mon Moam. Aidan Coleman, one of the youngest riders in the race, is on board this 25 to 1 chance. And one below him in the lineup, another young rider, 18 year old Nick Schofield, the only amateur, rides this 100 to 1 chance Cornish set. Number 30 is Norton Brook, who's one of the forerunners in the lineup for trainer Nigel Tristan Davis. He's ridden by Andrew Tinkler. On we go to 31, which is Tumbling Dice, an outsider from Ireland, giving Tom Ryan his first Grand National ride, 100 to 1. 32 is Backbeat, he gets only one star. Wilson Rennick, 100 to 1 chance. He's another outsider who can jump well on his day. 33 is Comply or Die, he's the pick of the five pipe runners. 
Timmy Murphy preferring this one, and he's 17 to two and well back today. 34 is idle talk from Ginger McCain or Donald McCain's table. Brian Harding rides this one, a 66 to one outsider. 35 is Kalami, a veteran. He ran a good second in the racing post chase and he's Barry Keneary's first Grand National ride. Number 36, Milan Dermiel, one of five runners in the race for trainer David Pipe. Tom Maloney's rider has had one ride round and finished 13th. Number 37, Nadeva, runs in the colours of George Stoney and three of his friends. They bought him on Monday afternoon. He's ridden by Robbie Power, last year's winning rider. 38 is Black Appalachie. Andrew McNamara rides a first runner in the race for trainer Desi Hughes. Number 39 is Filson Run, who was fourth last year owned by the Gale Force One Syndicate. It's organized by two retired policemen. And blinkered for the first time, number 40, Dundera, who ran last year. He was way behind all the way round before he pulled up at fence number 27. Richard McGrath rides him this afternoon. Who will it be celebrating after this year's race, the 2008 running of the John Smith's Grand National? The horses getting into numerical order so that they can parade in front of the grandstand and they will be sent on their way by a fanfare. class opening for a high class race this is probably the best quality grand national that has ever been staged and the horses will arrange themselves and they will be headed by hedge hunter an absolute superstar of a grand national horse he's run in the race four times and every time he's come to the last fence in contention the first time he came here he fell at the last then he won it then he was second last year he finished ninth after an interrupted preparation and he has been backed each way by an awful lot of people around the country, although he's got top weight of 11 stone 12. A lot of people know that he will run extremely well. And there he is at front of the parade with Ruby Walsh, his feet kicked out of his irons, trying to keep the old boy relaxed. He's 12 years old now. And Ruby has a wonderful record in this race. 10 to one he is. Must be one of the best backed horses of the day. Number two behind him is High Cloy, trained by Michael Hurrigan. Tom Doyle trying to get round for the first time. High class horse, a couple of years ago, slightly lost his way recently. Number three is nowhere. Nigel Twiston Davis, his trainer, has backed himself at 50 to 1 to win the national with one of his four runners. Might be that one. Missed appointment, owned by Anton Johnson and his syndicate. Sam Thomas on board for Paul Nichols. This one, Turco, one of the youngest horses in the race at only six years old. Richard Johnson riding him for Paul Nichols, who fancies him. Yeah, number six is Madison de Burley. He's one of five runners for, for David Pipe and the choice of Tom Scudamore. Number seven is Simon, got over 24 fences last year to ride of Dominic Ellsworth, replacing the injured Andrew Taunton. Number nine, just going out of order, is Iron Man. He's a 50 to one shot. He's tried to get around here and he's fallen to ice. Number 10 is Fundamentalist, one of Nigel Twiston Davis's runner. He's won it twice before and he's got a stable jockey, Paddy Brennan, on board. Number 11 is the choice of AP McCoy, Butler's Cabin, trying to make it 13th time lucky for the 12 times champion jockey. 12 is Slim Pickings, who finished third last year. Barry Geraghty stayed loyal to him, not surprisingly, trained specifically for this. 13 is Chelsea Harbour for Tom Mullins and Davey Russell. Good stare, he'll be up near the front. 14 is Vodka Blur for David Pipe and Paul Maloney, another trainer who has taken over in style from a successful father. 15 is Lamy, trained in France by Francois Dumaine. Mick Fitzgerald rides this horse who jumped well last year but got tired and finished 10th. 16 is Snowy Morning, David Casey rides, second of Willie Mullins' runners. Well fancied for this race when the betting started. 17, Beauty's Berry, fell in the race last year for Howard Johnson and Dennis O'Regan. Number 18 is Contraband, ran in the champion hurdle last time, 100 to one shot for Keith Mercer. Number 19 is McKelvey, second in the race last year, 25 to one, he's only ran twice this season for Tom O'Brien. 
Number 20 is Joachi. David Pipe told me he gave him a chance this morning. 66 to 1 for Johnny Farley. Number 21 behind him is Point Barrow, trained by Pat Hughes and ridden by Tony Dobb in his last national ride. This horse won an Irish national in 2006 and was co-favourite last year, but fell at the first. Number 22 is Darjo, a funny old horse who'll either love this or hate it. He's a big price because he's unpredictable, but he has the top team in Alan King and Robert Thornton. 23 is No Fall, Owen Doyle trains Shea Barry rides. Fourth ride in the race for Shea and a first runner for Owen Doyle. Only a seven-year-old, that one. Number 24 is Bailey Breeze, Paddy Flood on board for Mouse Morris. And he'd be a big shock if he were to win this, but he had a shock winner of the Irish National. Bob Hall is a 100 to 1 shot. John Joe O'Neill and Noel Feely was already joking about whether or not he'd get round. I don't think he fancies his chances. Huge crowd there getting a decent look at these runners. Number 26, Cloudy Lane, the favourite, has just gone through the picture. Jason Maguire, he's 7 to 1. King John's Castle, many people will back him because he's great. Paul Cabri has won the race before. 28, one of the youngest riders in the race, Aidan Coleman rides Mon Moan for Venetia Williams. Cornish set, number 29, the youngest rider in the race, Nick Schofield, 80 to 1. Number 30 is Norton Brook, if you back him, he's bound to be up with the pace for Nigel Twiston Davis and Andrew Tinkler. His favourite, actually, Norton Brook, to lead over the chair. Tumbling Dice is a first ride for a talented young Irish jockey, Tom Ryan, trained by the man who won the Gold Cup with Kicking King, Tom Taft, the trainer. 32 is backbeat for Howard Johnson. Wilson Rennick on board in the second colours of Graham Wiley. He's never raced beyond three miles, but he does seem to jump OK. 33, comply or die, has been backed all day. Timmy Murphy chose him. He's well handicapped. He's improved since the weight came out. He's an out-and-out -out stayer. Timmy's only worry is whether he'll be taken off his feet early on. 34 is Idle Talk. He's a very tricky jumper. He's unseated five times in his last ten runs. So the main thing for Brian Harding is to sit tight. 35 is Kel Ami, a full brother to Lamy. Trained by Francois Dumen, Barry Canary taking the ride in the colours that were carried to victory by Amberley House. Number 36, 125 to 1, Milan de Mille for Tom Malone. And he's finished, he's finished fifth over these fences before. Nad over, 150 to 1 for Charlie Mann. Robbie Power won the race last year. Number 38 is Black Appalachie, another Irish or 66 to 1 for Desi Hughes and Andrew McNamara. Number 39, Filson Run, finished fourth in the race last year. He's in an ideal preparation. It's probably a big price at 33 to 1. Daryl Jacob rides. And number 40, Dundere, joint favourite for the race last year. Not a perfect preparation, but he's 33 to 1 this year. Looks a big price. And finally, bringing up the rear, the horse that came in as a reserve, Arda Hay, carries number 8 on his saddlecloth, but he has bottom weight of 10 stone 7, and David England jumped at the chance of riding him. Richard Dunn, Woody with me, three times champion jockey and twice the winner of this race. Mini Homer, of course, was a lovely little horse for you. But how do these jocks feel now? They're showing them the first fence. Do they need to see a fence? It's good to, to take them down there, just show them the first. Some of these mightn't have seen a fence like this before, so it's great for the jockeys to, to get down away from the stands. Now they can canter back to the start in a minute. And, and get back in the zone and focus on the race. It's been a really long lead up, Richard, and this is bad for horses and jockeys because it's time for nerves to set in. Yes, uh, horses, a few horses getting their toes. It's also important there's plenty of space, but horses can get very easily kicked down at the start, and you don't want that happening at this stage. There is Cloudy Lane. Now, he was very excited, well, not excited, but moving on very fast in the pre frame but he's settled down now. He's settled and, uh, yeah, looking well. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's Jason will be really looking forward to a decent ride off him. Last minute preparations going on for the horses down at the start. You can just see Tony McCoy in the first colours of JP McManus, number 11, in the gold and green and the white cap. But I have to say, Butler's cabin is mad. It's just getting a little bit warm and sweating under the saddle. One or two horses, despite the fact that it's quite a chilly day, are getting quite warm. And in fact, there is number one, Hedgehunter, the top weight. Ruby Walsh on board, he's another horse who's sweated up under the saddle, he's got a bit warm down on his neck, and you'd have to be slightly concerned about that, but apart from that, the rest of the field are taking proceedings quite comfortably at the moment, and I have to say that although it's very, very loud with the crowd around, the jockeys, who normally are quite talkative before the race, they're very hushed, seems that the nerves have got them quiet at the moment. Well, who'd have believed it with the gamble going on in Cloudy Lane, they're now joint favourites, Cloudy Lane and Comply or Die. 
Next in is Slim Pickens. It's 7 to 1, joint favourites. It's Hedge Hunter who's been backed in from 20s. Butler's Cabin's been coming in for the AP McCoy. Slim Pickens back into 10 to 1. It's 11 Simon, 12 to 1 Bewley's Betty, 14 to 1 Chelsea Harbour, and 16 Snowy Morning. Other horses, Vodka Blair's been backed from 33s to 20s, and Iron Man's been cut in half, 100 to 50s. Right, Norman, from everything you know, from all that you've seen, from the jockeys you've spoken to, what do you think? I'm sticking with Hedge Hunter, Claire. I think he's a short price now at 10 to 1. This is comply or die. Well, well backed horse. Stays really well. Where's the blinkers? I'm just thinking that he might need things to go his own way. Timmy Murphy will probably go middle outer, I'd say. Need a little bit of light on him. But David Pipe, speaking to him this morning, he really fancies him and he looks well in the ring. Just to the left of him was Dajon. He'll be easy to spot. There in those blue and white colours, that's slim pickings. Barry Geraghty on board. They finished third last year. They might have won it if they jumped the last two better. And there is the starter. Sean McDonald in charge for the first time of this race. He said, I don't get nervous about this. Jim doesn't get nervous either. Right, this time, if you just keep coming steady, steady in front, steady, now steady. Now they're coming in for the 2008 Grand National. The tape goes up and they're off and running. Away to a pretty good start too, down near the inside, no fool, first to begin from Melanda Mill, up there too in the early stages, snowy morning, Mon Moma showing out as well as they charge down towards the Melling Road, tumbling dice and idle talker there, Mr Point went out deep on the track as they cross the Melling Road and head to the first of 30, we join Ian Bartlett. So the 40 of them charge down towards it with no fall up there, also Melanda Mill, snowy morning, one of the first to rise as they come over the first fence and looking all the way back, Vodka blows over it at the back of the field. They were all over it safely. Number two coming up now as they come down towards it. Milan Dermil is one of the first over it. No full is hampered by a faller towards the inside there as they race on down towards the next fence. And back beat has gone as they come to the open ditch now. Milan Dermil, Mr. Pointman, tumbling dice has unseated the riders. They get over that. Norton Brook is right at the back of the field. Lammy was a faller at the second fence. There's also one other down Iron Man has fallen as they come to the fourth Mr. Pointman was just the leader over that snowy morning the yellow jacket in second place Melanda Mill is there compile day Madison de Berlin and dies on towards the outside Cloudy Lane in behind those here's Tony O'Hare at the fence before Beaches and Melanda Meal is the leader with also prominent snowy morning. Complier die is not far behind them, then towards the inside is no full, they're all safely over. Coming down towards Beaches, Darjant is uh, out wide and just in behind the leaders uh, too as they come to this complier die, but at Beaches it's Melanda Meal who leads over it. And we've lost one on the inside, it looks like no full that's uh, fallen as they go on now towards the Foyne Avon fence and the leader is Milan de Meal from Snowy Morning, Mr. Appointment on the inside, Chelsea Harbour just behind them on stake by Contraband, then Comply or Die and they're followed by Hedge Hunter, Simon behind these is Joachie, then Butler's Cabin, after these Bewley's Berry Darge and out wide behind these Cloudy Lane, then Madison de Berlay and Calami as they come now to jump the canal turn and it's Milan de Meal the leader for Mr. Appointment, the leader's uh, all safely over and heading towards the next fence we've lost one there, Madison de Berlay was a faller as Milan de Mille leads Mr. Appointment and uh, then comes Chelsea Harbour as we go now to Darren Owen. La Capalacci was an early casualty, they're going on towards the 10th, the leader is Milan de Mille followed by Mr. Appointment and Filson Runners gone at the canal turn so they jump the 10th and it is Milan de Mille who leads from Mr. Appointment Chelsea Harbour, snowy morning, down the centre comply or die followed by Simon, just in behind those is Joe Archie on the wide out side Darjean as they draw towards the second ditch and it's Milan de Mille by a few lengths to Mr. Appointment in second place as they, and Contraband was the faller there. They go on now towards a plain fence, Milan de Mille followed by Mr. Appointment. Kellamy is a faller. Chelsea Harbour's close up in third, Simon is in fourth, then Comply or Die being followed by Darjean just in behind the leaders as they head towards the Melling Road is Hedge Hunter and then further back to Butler's Cabin. So they cross the Melling Road, they head on to the race course and go now towards fence number number 13 in the national and the leader is just Milan de Mille followed by Darjean, Simon, Mr. Pointment, Comply or Die is tracking the leading group, they're very well grouped, there's still quite a number of runners still standing, looking towards the back, the back markers are Bailey Breeze and Norton Brook and here's Jim McGrath. Well two loose horses preceding the field here is uh, Tom Malone on Milan de Mille, is the leader on the inside from Darjean wider out, just behind them is Simon followed by Mr. Pointment who's been jumping well. They're followed
followed by Chelsea Harbour and behind them the white cap of Butler's Cabin. Out wider can Ply or Die and Bewley's Berry who's right there in the centre. They're also there as Hedgehunter is not that far away. He's running a big race followed further back by Turco. Snowy morning as they come now to the 14th. It's Milan de Mille, the leader from Mr. Point but Darjean and can Ply and Die. They're followed by Simon who's just behind them and uh, further back in the field then is Snowy Morning followed by Hedgehunter Mon Moam then Idle Talk the inside Chelsea Harbour not that far away as they head now towards the chair now it's Melanda Miel who leads Mr Point but they head over the chair Simon jumped it well Darjot behind them all the leaders got over it well in fact they're all over so head to the water now and the leaders here are Mr Pointman in the centre Melanda Miel Simon on the near side company with Darjot they're followed by Idle Talk and further back Chelsea Harbour Bewley's Berry can fly or die behind them a snowy morning followed by Butler's Cabin then Mon Moan 28 still standing followed then by uh, further back then getting a slap of the whip there is Joachi uh, Turco made a mistake at the water further back then is High Cloy followed then on the outside by Hedgehunter there followed by Slim Pickings and further back in the field then is King John's Castle Nadover Dundera towards the rear with McKelvey who's giving them a long start as they come now towards the 17th fence in the National. Point Barrow has been pulled up which rejoined Ian Bartlett. Mr Pointman was over the 17th in front. Dijon is there towards the outside of him. Comply or die and Beulis Berry. Snowy morning is there. Chelsea Harbour the red cap of idle talk on the inside. Mon Moam is behind those. Mr Pointman leading over the next. Dijon makes a mistake as the leaders get over it safely. Norton Brook right at the back of the field. They come down to the open it's 19, Mr. Pointman leading to Chelsea Harbour, Dodge and Idle Talk, Mon Moan, Butler's Cabin getting into it, Comply or Die was next, Simon is losing ground, Snowy Morning, Beauty's Berry is still there, then towards the outside, Duachi under pressure as they head down to another plain one, Norton Brook has pulled up, Bob Hall has pulled up before the 19th as well, Vodka Blue has, Blur has also stopped as Comply or Die, Snowy Morning, Dodge on Butler's Cabin, Chelsea Harbour and Mr. Pointman lead as we rejoin Tony O'Hare. Mr. Pointman on the inside, out wide is Comply or Die. Chelsea Harbour is right there, Butler's Cabin, so too Darjong. Just behind these is uh, Snowy Morning. Uh, they all appear to be safely over and heading down towards Beaches Brook with Comply or Die on the outside. Towards the inside, Chelsea Harbour, the grey Darjong, Butler's Cabin right up there in the firing line. Mr. Pointman still there on the inside as they take Beaches. And uh, we've lost one there, it looks as if Butler's Cabin is the faller. Butler's Cabin is down. Tony McCoy out of the race at Beaches as they come to the Foyne Haven, Mr. Pointman on the inside of Chelsea Harbour, followed by Darjon in fourth place on the outside from Plyer Dice, Snowy Morning and Idle Talk just behind them with Bewley's Berry. Nowhere is made ground just in behind them, then Hedge Hunter and Simon and Slip Pickings and then King John's Castle. And behind uh, King John's Castle is Mon Moan and then Cloudy Lane. They're at the canal turn. Chelsea Harbour jumps to the lead there. A slight mistake by Bewley's Berry as they head towards Valentine's now. It's Chelsea Harbour from Mr. Pointman, Snowy Morning, Idle Talk, Bewley's Berry, Darjon, Hedge Hunter is next on the inside, it's over to Darren Owen. has gone so they go on now towards the last five fences and it is Chelsea Harbour the leader and nowhere has also gone it is Chelsea Harbour Mr. Pointman Bewley's Berry snowy morning in the yellow jacket is to the centre of the track former winner of the race Hedge Hunter getting closer Darjon rode along then comply or die slim pickings in the blue colours King John's Castle another grey is also creeping into it as they jump the last open ditch and Darjon was the one who went there so with three to jump Bewley's Berry snowy morning by a length or so to Chelsea Harbour, Comply or Die, Slim Pickens, Mr. Pointman, King John's Castle. They're chased by Idle Talk as they jump the third last. Hedge Hunter, Mon Moan, Cloudy Lane with work to do. Then High Cloy, further back to Bailey Breeze. The leaders cross the Melling Road. It, it is Bewley's Berry, the inside of Snowy Morning. And then just in behind them, King John's Castle, followed by Comply or Die, Chelsea Harbour. And then a break of a few lengths to Cornish Set is trying to get on terms. On the wide outside is Bailey Breeze. They've got two to jump. It is Bewley's Berry. Snowy morning from Compile Die, Chelsea Harbour, Slim Pickings, back to the grandstand and Jim McGrath. Well, Bewley's Berry for Dennis O'Regan shows the way in the Grand National from Snowy Morning, the outside, David Casey. Compile or Die, Timmy Murphy coming into it and Barry Garrity is looming up now on Slim Pickings. King John's Castle, the grey in behind goes well. Five in contention as they head to the second last in the National. It's Snowy Morning, a lit over it narrowly, but Compile or Die coming there strongly. Bewley's Berry on the inside, Slim Pickings and look 
with the grey. King John's Castle is starting to loom up. One left to jump. Comply or die. Jump better than Snowy Morty. But uh, King John's Castle is the big danger. Running on well. They race towards the elbow. Timmy Murphy looks over his right shoulder. He sees King John's Castle coming at him hard. They race towards the elbow. It's Comply or die in front. Snowy Morty coming again. King John's Castle the outside. Comply or die. Punched out by Murphy. Leads by three or four legs and is going to go on and win the Grand National. It's comply or die. Timmy Murphy who wins the Grand National. In second is King John's Castle. Third is Snowy Morning. Fourth is Slim Vickings. Followed then in fifth by Bewley's Berry. Sixth is Cloudy Lane. Followed by Ned Over and further back Bailey Breeze. Then Chelsea Bruce, Chelsea Harbour. Mon Moment. Then High Cloyd from Corny Set. Then Hedge Hunter who's one of the last ahead of Idle Talk and they are the only finishers in the main pack. I think there's, in fact, there's one, uh, there's one who's been pulled up and that is Chelsea Harbour. So David Pipe has won the Grand National with Comply or Die, written by Timmy Murphy and owned by David Johnson. It's uh, a magnificent victory for the Pipes. Second is number 27, that's King John's Castle, Paul Carberry. Third, number 16, Snowy Morning, ridden by David Casey. And fourth, number 12, Slim Pickings, Barry Geraghty. Early estimates are that 14 horses have finished in this year's Grand National. They are early estimates, we will check that in due course. But what a moment for Timmy Murphy as he comes home having won the Grand National on his 12th attempt this 33 year old rider who has had his ups and downs and here he has his greatest moment of triumph in racing and uh, being congratulated by Davy Russell four lengths the winning distance one and a half lengths between second and third Comply or die, the 7 to 1 joint favourite, heavily back today. King John's Castle, 20 to 1. Snowy Morning, 16 to 1. And Slim Pickings at 10.